guys, I'm Jimmy with Yo Mama Pool Service and I want to talk to you today about test kits. Specifically, strips versus drops. There seems to be a big controversy out there about which way is better to go. A lot of folks say strips aren't as accurate, but I'll tell you what, they've come a long way over the years and they're a heck of a lot closer than they used to be. Side by side, strips versus drops, drops versus strips, strips versus drop, 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 strips. But we're supposed to get our water sample from 18 inches below the surface and away from the returns. The reason is that surface water is very, very different than the rest of the water we have in the pool. It's nasty. 90% of the sun's rays get absorbed right in the surface. That changes the water chemistry. So that sample wouldn't be representative of the pool as a whole. Also, 80% of the bacteria that form in a pool form right in that top six inches. 100% of the gack that comes off of your bathers that refuse to shower before they get in the pool, that floats right on the surface. So we don't want to test that. We want to reach down below. <laughs> below that because we want a sample that's representative of the pool as a whole. So we want 18 inches below the surface. But sometimes all that leaning over, leaning over, leaning over, leaning over can hurt your back. Oh God, my back. Oh. <laughs> We've reached out to a couple of our friends for some possible solutions. So John Poma, down in Lakeland, Florida, he's got the water collection. The water collection what? Ah, the water collection apparatus. So here we go to John in Lakeland. Starting up just the right cloud. Looks like he's going to lay up. Looks like a seven iron. And here it is. Perfect distance. And just to the left of the green. An easy chip from here and a short putt from a nice safe par. Now, he can't afford to fall any further behind the leader. Now to the 18th. And our leader with a two-shot lead. He has a difficult 40-footer for a birdie. And if he makes this, he really puts the pressure on the rest of the field. Good speed, right at it, oh, just lifted a tap. I've run these tests hundreds of times, comparing one to the other, strips to drops, side by side comparisons, and I found the results to be negligible. That means both are pretty accurate. It's true, there's not a health department in the country that I'm aware of that allows to use the test strips. I'll tell you what, these strips, Super, super fast. So if you guys are ever out there and time is a big issue and you need to get from place to place really quick, dip the strip, match the color, and move on. That's all you got to do. So they're super convenient, super easy, and like I said, the results are pretty close nowadays. Tune in to Pool Talk with Kara Green, where she talks about the hottest topics in today's industry. Everything from pools to aquatics to hotels to apartment complexes. She's got it all. Check in with Kara. Really and there's a lot of reasons for that. My biggest problems with strips are threefold. And it all really just depends on who's out there using them. First of all, if you leave the cap off or if your fingers are wet, you can get moisture inside the container and destroy it all your strips in one shot. That day would suck. Now you gotta go back and find some way to test the water. The second thing I don't like is the calcium hardness test. They don't have one. It just tests for total hardness and that's a combination of both magnesium and calcium and we want to separate that out because when we run the Langolier saturation index the only thing we're concerned with is calcium hardness. Magnesium can actually account for up to 25% of that reading, and that will throw off your saturation index quite a bit. Then, we have the increments in which it measures. They're just too far apart for my taste. For example, if I have to calculate my total alkalinity, the readings show for between 80 to 100 that it's good, right? And it is. But, 
anything below 80 shows up as low. Below that shows up as very low. What the hell is that? How do you make an adjustment based off of that crap? If I know exactly where it is, I can calculate an exact amount and then put my dose in. That's what I want. That's where the drops have some benefits. In the drops, it actually only measures the calcium hardness. Those first 20 drops you add for the calcium hardness test are actually designed to make the pH go way up to eliminate the effect of magnesium. If I get my reagent bottle wet, it's just wet, no big deal, I still have a test kit I can use. Not that those can't go bad either, you don't want to leave them out in the sunlight, you certainly don't want to let them suckers freeze on you. Those mother fathers will be useless! Then, the increments are measure are a lot closer. They actually measure total alkalinity by tens. 10 parts per million at a time. I can work with that because I can calculate a dose and then adjust my chemistry accordingly. But still not perfect. <clears throat> John Poma in Lakeland and he showed off his water collection. What was it called again? Water collection apparatus. Now we're going to go to Paulette. Paul S. actually got the strip stick. That's right. You've heard it here first. The strip stick. Go to Paul S. My new invention, thanks to Rudy, I got my telescopic pointer pole and duct tape. My Jeep tip clip and a test strip. Now on leg day, I don't have to bend down and throw test strips in. Strip it a strip, da dip 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 drop da drop da dip dip trip 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 drop 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 da drop drop. Can you see what I was talking about right here? See how the total alkalinity kind of jumps from from good to low to very low? That's not an actual number. I can't do anything with that. All that does is tell me that I need to go get another test kit to figure out where that is exactly and then make my adjustment. If I need to use another test kit, why wouldn't I have died just use the other test kit in the first place? Beats me. Drop test people, you're not completely off the hook either. Take a look at these measures. That chlorine reading, that jumps around. It goes from three to five. Three to five? That's not gonna help me out, especially now with the big push to make a maximum acceptable level of chlorine at four parts per million. So this test kit, I'd have to guess. Dip the strip in, dip the strip in, dip the strip in. Which one's better? Well, here's what I think. Let the people who test the water decide. The people who run their companies, let them choose the means in which their employees test water. Everybody else should just shut the flock up. Ha! Flock it. So, that's my thoughts. The differences were negligible. There were pluses and minuses in both. As long as you take into consideration all of the different factors when you're sending your team out there to test the water, who cares? Don't let somebody else tell you what to do. It's not like you got somebody's hand up your ass telling you what to say. Hey! That wasn't funny.